What's up everybody, my name is Vince, welcome to the channel. And today we're gonna be going over a new tool offering from Milwaukee. It's one that I thought I wouldn't be doing because in any correspondence back and forth with Milwaukee Tool, they've always told us that they wanted to go cordless. I don't know if it was something in my mind made me think, well, if they're going cordless, like this cordless brad nailer, we would never be going over this tool. Never thought they'd be making it because it works for the hose. Hose, cord, is it the same thing? Let me know down in the comment section below. But I'll tell you this much, when it came over Z wire or email, I was super excited because there are or is pneumatic tools that I just don't want to give up. We're going to go over this new offering right after this message from our sponsor, VCG Construction. Milwaukee is on a mission to improve their cordless offerings. This Gen 2 Brad Nailer made me a believer. It's got a lot of great features. It's got plenty of power for shooting in, you know, FJP all the way to hardwoods. There is only one problem though. Milwaukee does not presently make a cordless pin nailer. I will use a pin nailer where I can. I still was burdened with not only a hose, because you need a hose to operate this, this is a pneumatic tool, but a cord, because I needed to plug in a compressor. A lot of you over the years asked us to find out if Milwaukee had any plans for doing a cordless compressor. We asked, they said no. Their focus was cordless nailers. So I kind of figured that a compressor, because it uses a hose, wasn't in the works. Well, they snuck this one up on us. This is Milwaukee's M18 Fuel compressor. When they announced this, I was so fired up about it because it's the form factor I like without the cord. It's great. It's product number 2840-20. It's a two gallon compact quiet compressor. Fits all M18 batteries. Here's a question for you though. Because it's fuel, if you use larger amp hour batteries or batteries with HO architecture, does it operate at its maximum potential? I don't know. This is tool only. It says quiet as cordless. It says less noise. They're saying a the lawnmower is at 90 decibels. Vacuum cleaners at 80 decibels. Cordless competitors at 85 decibels. It's saying that the Milwaukee M18 fuel compressor is at like 65 decibels. We can confirm that. Here's the problem with that though. I don't know their testing criteria. Easiest transport, less hassle. Okay, it's got a compact design, which I like. It's got a nice carry handle, which I like. That's present on my previous model. It is 31.2 pounds, lightweight, 1600 nails per charge. So if you're using a 12 amp hour battery, you're gonna get that, that 1600 nails. Okay, if you want to step it down to an 8 amp hour, you're going to get 1,000. And if you use a 5 amp hour, you're going to get 600. You'll see here on the specifications, SCFMs, 1.2 at 90 PSI. Capacities, 2 gallons. Sound level, 68 decibels, it says here. Regulator, single turn. Pump type is oil-free. Length and width, 16.3 by 18.5. Height, 10.3 inches. And weight, 31.2 pounds. We could actually confirm that if you all like. Let's get this thing out of the box. See that roll cage? It protected it. Look, boom. Threw it down on the table. I could have damaged it. A very utilitarian. It's not a lot of frills here. Like, we can see how everything operates. We have our tank. This seems to be the same enclosed switch that we'd find on the Gen 2 vacuum cleaner pretty nice there's a lot of it just it seems like business going on here you can see our power state brushless motor is down here inside the compressor you can see we have a single gauge my older compressor has two gauges it has the tank pressure and then the outlet pressure they're choosing to have a dial that indicates what your outlet pressure is instead of using this in conjunction with a gauge. Here's our, our cock, which is very positive to drain your tank. I like that, pretty nice. It's called the intake filter. Okay, that's the filter cap. Okay, the filter and cap. This is the tube. So we're supposed to install 
I, I will tell you this much. I'm gonna throw some Teflon tape on here because I'm more worried about it seizing in there over time as opposed to you know, sealing. I, I just would like to have that Teflon on there. I'm gonna pop in our filter. I'm gonna put our cover back on. Then we're gonna put our hose back in. All right, so we have the big boy. We're gonna pop it in right here. It'll fit in the box. No problem at all. Then we have to turn on our switch. Before we do that though, I'm thinking maybe we should throw this bad boy on the scale. We gotta put down a piece of wood, turn our scale on, so it will take its tear. You'll see it's zero, zero. We're gonna put the compressor to balancing act. Okay, with the 12.0 battery, it's 34 pounds, 9.4 ounces. Without the battery, we're looking at 31 pounds, and like three ounces. We're gonna turn on our digital sound level meter. The ambient noise in here is right around 30, 38 decibels, correct? So Milwaukee Tool doesn't give us a, a distance when measuring this. So we're gonna, we're gonna act as though we're going to be right on top of this compressor all day. We're gonna turn the compressor on. We're gonna set the, we're gonna set the outlet pressure to 110 PSI, which really doesn't matter we, we just want our tank to get up to pressure. We have an almost full 12 amp hour battery. Let's turn, let's flip the switch. That blow off valve kind of caught me off guard. I wasn't expecting that. You will see when the tank is empty and, it, and the compressor's first beginning to build pressure, the, the decibels were right in that range that Milwaukee claims. As the tank began to fill and the compressor had to work harder to fill this tank, those decibels began to rise above what their stated pressure is. Now, we're at 110 on the outlet pressure, tank is sitting right around 130. I wanna say if we increase our outlet pressure, will that automatically give us a rise in tank pressure? Wow, I'll tell you this much. Wow. Is there a procedure? Okay, so if for some reason we were changing our, our tool or we were going from one type of, of nailer to another and we needed to make an adjustment to our outlet pressure, it's telling us we need to turn the compressor off first. It says to relieve some pressure from the tank. Now, I don't know if it needs to, we need to relieve all the pressure Wow, that's, it's locked in place. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave all pressure at this point. And now the, the switch is, has released. There doesn't seem to be any adjustment on the fly. We have to lock, lock the tank back down. Okay, and we have to refill. We're gonna have to refill the tank. Let's see how it does. I will tell you. I think that for finish work, a two gallon compressor is is a really is a good size. If you're if you're a single if single person using nailers, I think this is would be fine for you. I have a single issue, and that is when I'm assembling molding, I a lot of times will use my brad nailer, pneumatic brad nailer, and my pin nailer at the same time. So I will have two hoses feeding the two nailers. We only have a single outlet here on the compressor. This Grex pin nail has maybe a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton of money. The only thing is, is that it does require 
Oh, it drops oil. And to be honest with you, I would never put that many pins in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a piece of molding, but I'm trying to see where our compressor will kick back home. So we're set at around, went around 110 PSI, which is plenty to run this, this pin nailer. Let's run a couple more so we can see when it will turn on. And I guess my point would be, if you were, if you were going to ask me to run things like pin nailers, brad nailers, finish nailers, is this two gallon compressor capable? I would say yes. And, and because of the tank, you'll see, for running those tools, you don't have the compressor kicking off and on, off and on, off and on. I mean, we, we've driven three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, I mean, we're in, in the 30, 30 something pin range. We don't, and we haven't had the compressor kick back on yet. Let's keep going. So we dropped down to about 100 PSI in the tank. And now it's kicking back on. I'm, I really am excited to have this. It is one more battery to charge, but it's one less extension cord to carry, one less outlet that I have to find on the job. It seems very convenient. It seems very quiet, and it seems to top itself off rather quickly. Now, if you were going to ask me, Vince, what can I expect to use this with? Exactly what I've demonstrated. Pin nailers, brad nailers, finish nailers. Your, na your, your finish nailers. It would probably where where the sweet spot would be for this. You could top off a tire here and there. It probably would be quicker than those inflator style tools. Okay, but you're still it's still this compressor is still going to need to run to fill a truck tire. Probably start up and run continuously to get it topped off. But it seems handy to have. It's this seems handy to have in your truck for more than one reason. Do I think you can run uh, air, like pneumatic uh, impact wrenches or, or ratchets or sprayers? You know, no, that's not what this is designed for. Roofing nailers and framing nailers. You probably could run a framing nailer, um, but I don't know about, you know, you're probably not gonna get much rapid fire out of, out of this tank. Yeah, you know, this, this is on the very small side. So let us know down in the comment section below, what do you think of Milwaukee's new fuel M18 compressor? Were you as shocked as I was that they came out of this because they're going, like I said, they're going all cordless. Or not. We want to know. Leave it down below. Also, if you appreciate the content, please consider hitting the like button. It helps out the channel immensely. It's free for you to do. Also, smashing the like button here on YouTube isn't like smashing a mirror. You actually get seven years of good luck. So there's no reason for you not to do it. With that, I want to say I appreciate each and every one of you for being here. Thanks a lot, everybody. We'll see you all on the next one. Video's over, but I know you want more. So this is how you're gonna get it. First thing you need to do is pretend you're this guy. And you're here at the birthplace of freedom. Now ring that bell like it's 1776 and let all notifications throw. What? You're not subscribed yet? Well, smash this button here. After that, watch this video here, here, and maybe over here. See you later.